Hey all, Kyle here, AA0Z, coming to you with another Node Red video. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Node Red status messages. But first, if you have not seen my playlist with all of my other Node Red videos, um, I'm going to take a screenshot and a link in the description below. It's where you can find all of my Node Red videos, and maybe there's something that uh, you will find interesting. But today we're going to talk about a node red statuses and how they can benefit you. So before we take a look at a node status example, let's take a look at the documentation on the node red website. So they've got two mosquito nodes here that are connected. One is in a green connected state and the other one is in a red disconnected state. And then they have some notation down here. Now, I have not gotten this.status to work. The notation that I have gotten to work is node.status and then a uh, parentheses and then a curly bracket and then we're gonna do some JSON formatting here. You've got a fill parameter, you've got a shape parameter and a text parameter. If you scroll down here, first two define the appearance of the status icon and the third is an optional short piece of text less than 20 characters to display along the icon. So the shape can be either a ring or a dot. The fill can be red, green, yellow, blue, or gray. And here is the dot, and here is the, I'm sorry, this is the ring. The top is a ring. Let me scroll in here. So that is a ring, and then the bottom is a dot. And then you can see red, green, yellow, blue, and gray. And then you don't have to put a text. Typically, you want to put some type of text. Mes maybe that is message payload. Maybe that is a value. But it can be basically anything. So let's take a look at the notation here. So you've got this.status. We are going to use node.status. You've got a open parentheses, a curly bracket, and then the parameter fill, colon. And this uh, status is going to have a red dot. Actually, it's gonna have a red ring. The shape is a ring and the text is disconnected. If we go back to our example, I've got two inject nodes, a true and a false. So we can check that. Here we're passing message payload equals the Boolean true. And here we're passing the Boolean false as message payload, okay? Here is our function node. If message payload equals true, we're going to say node status equals the fill is green, the shape is a dot, and the text is this is awesome. Okay? And then we're going to return that message. So that would be we're returning message payload, which would be returning the true value as a Boolean. If message payload equals false, then we are saying use the node status as a red dot and display the text close, not awesome. And then we're returning the message payload, which would be false. So if we, and then we just got a debug node on here that is debugging to the uh, debug window. So if we take a look and inject true, you can see the debug here is true and the status is a green dot and this is awesome. So that displays it underneath the function node. If we inject a false, then it's going to put a red dot and then it's going to display the text close, not awesome. The debug is false. So and we can go back and forth. And that is how you put status nodes, statuses underneath different nodes. Now, this mostly works with function nodes and uh, nodes that you write from scratch. Um, I haven't seen where you can put statuses in the standard nodes that come with, with uh, Node Red. So if you know how to do that, please put a comment in the description or the, in the comments below and teach me how to do that because I do not know. Uh, how you can get that done. This is what I use whenever I write a function node to figure out what is the um, 
the value or what is the status of that node. So I don't have to keep flipping back and forth between my dashboard and my workspace to make sure that you know the value that I'm expecting is actually what's being displayed on the dashboard. So little, uh, a little helpful tip and trick for you in the next part of this, we are going to show how you can take a status node from your palette here and monitor the status from another flow and start a second flow or push a value depending on what it is from the status node. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned to part two, but I wanted to show you how I use the status node in my flows on my workspace. Thanks for watching, 73.